What up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report, where we talk about the latest and greatest news in the superhero film and TV genre. Welcome, 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 welcome. This, this show is a jam-packed show. Um, here to discuss these things with me, make sense of it all. Mr. Brian Schultz, what's going on, Brian? All's well, Pablo. How are things on your side? Good, man. Good. Uh, been busy, been busy. That's why I was kind of late this week with the show, but uh, we're going to keep it going. We're going to keep it going. Um, a lot of news. This time, not so much on the Marvel side, a lot of DC news. Yeah. We're going to get into it with WandaVision because there's a lot of buzz building around WandaVision. I know you guys can feel it. Uh, people are talking about it. People are speculating. All that is happening with WandaVision, and we want to get into it a little bit with that. Then we're going to go into DC. Again, not a lot of Marvel news. Um, then we're going to get into DC and talk about Peacemaker. James Gunn is living in a candy land. <laughs> He's jumping and galloping and looking at all the things that he has at his disposal. Because he's doing it all. Once he's done with this, he's going to this, and then he's going back to that. As you all know, he's doing his Suicide Squad movie. Then he's going to do Peacemaker. Then he's going to uh, Guard Guardians of the Galaxy 3, correct? Yep. Everybody loves James Gunn right now. Everybody feeling him. Not so much a long time. Uh, how, how long ago? Like a year or two ago? Yeah, it's, amazing how, it's amazing how quickly the the world changes, you know. Hey, yeah, speaking yeah, speaking is... of multiverse, right? <laughs> There's another another version of this where James Gunn is not involved with any of these properties, right? Exactly, now. man. And it's hey, hey, you had to do what you had to do at the time that it happened because how are you gonna sit down to talk about this? You had to let it go. So, but now people have moved on, and and James Gunn is is living the dream. The true definition of living the dream. Um, then we're going to get into Disney Plus. And everybody is sort of uh, in the know when it comes to the number of shows that are coming out that are confirmed that, I, that, I, that, that Marvel is working on. We're going to give you our list of low expectations to high expectation ranking of these shows so wandavision so the buzz you know uh what's her name uh elizabeth olsen right mm -hmm. she um has been making the rounds with vision and giving us a, 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 a bit of insight as to what's going on with the show i'm hearing they're doing an homage to classic sitcoms mm -hmm. um although i think it's going to happen within the because there's only six episodes am i right correct so this is not going to take i don't think it's going to take the entirety of the uh, of of the shows um but we'll get into that and uh we also have some insight, obviously, but this is not really some insight. This is something we've known already that the end of the, because people are reiterating to us that this movie will lead in directly to Doctor Strange 2. Ryan, what did you think about the insight that we've been given into WandaVision and uh, are you excited for WandaVision more now than you were before when they first announced it? So I'll take the second question first. The short answer is yes, although some of that is a function of the way the world has played out. We were supposed to have had Black Widow, Falcon and Winter Soldier, and Eternals by now. And because of COVID, the world we're in, we haven't gotten any of those. 
So I think everyone's anticipation for this show has probably gone up as a part as a function of just this will be the first Marvel material we've had since Endgame. And that in and of itself is incredibly exciting. The the Entertainment Weekly feature, I don't, I mean, they, they kept it pretty close to the best. There wasn't a whole lot of incremental about the storyline. The little things, you know, the, I think the quote was the love letter to the golden age of TV. And they did say they actually brought Dick Van Dyke in to talk about this show. That I thought was actually wow. pretty hilarious that they actually called him. So that means they're really taking that angle seriously. And you see it in the trailer, you know, whether it's I Love Lucy or, or what have you, it's Brady Bunch or what, like there's all sorts of decades. I think there's about 50 years worth of TV they're trying to cover in this, what we presume is an alternate reality that, that. Correct. Scarlet Witch and Vision are trapped in effectively. And, and we think Catherine Hahn is the one maybe behind that, but um, we we'll, guess we'll find out. I thought the other thing that was interesting in the article was this was Kevin Feige's idea. I don't know if I'd yeah. ever known that, that he, he, it was his idea to the, the sitcom sort of setting for this yeah, was yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. came from him. At least that's the way article portrayed it, which I don't think mm -hmm. I'd ever heard before. So mm -hmm. You know, just the latest bit of evidence that he's sort of the the linchpin for a lot of these yeah. choices that get made. Yeah. Um, um, and then to your point, they really are driving home. There was a blurb in the article about the reordering of the properties because of COVID. And it drove home this point you were saying, which is you cannot see or understand Doctor Strange 2 without watching this show. So the great course. experiment of linking of television, streaming television to a movie and and, and making you subscribe to kind of be up to speed on, on the of course other. that's how it all works man that's how it all works so, you know i gotta ask you i gotta ask you a question though because this is it wasn't in the story but it's come up a few times and it's it's kind of bouncing around the ether which is quicksilver in or out like the idea that he might a he might be in this show in some capacity and b that it's kind of inconclusive as to which Quicksilver we might get. So there's rumors that Aaron Taylor Johnson might reprise the role that he had in the MCU, but there's also been rumors that maybe Evan Peters pops up from the from the sort of the X-Men verse. Like, what are your thoughts on sort of that? Any kind of fire to that smoke? And if so, like, do you have a preference as to which Quicksilver we get? Um, I would I would still like to see. Uh, the 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 Quicksilver of the MCU, although I thought the Quicksilver in at Fox was equally as good. Um, Probably the biggest that may be one of the bigger upside surprises we've had. The first photo we saw of him, I think you and I both were like, "WTF?" <laughs> he looks so dumb. And then the scene in the movie was awesome. Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, when you can make people initially think that this is whack and then and then totally <laughs> make me feel like you it, it works man if you're able to do that it works um so i heard rumors of him of the fox quicksilver that he may be mephisto i heard rumors of that um and i've also heard rumors that this the, the mcu quicksilver will make an appearance it's the most, you know, it, it, this is this is not the the reality of the MCU. This is Wanda's reality. So true. Anything is possible. If she could flash I, back. She could flash forward. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, we could even that, take both I, of them. You know, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So is is it, anything is game here if they make it make sense? But again, it doesn't have to make sense because we're in an alternate reality. So she is the one, or. What's her name? Agatha. Uh, it's Agatha Harkness, I think is her name. Yeah, yeah. that's Catherine Hahn's character, the yes. next door neighbor who's a witch. And, yes. So yeah. you you you're saying that she may be behind all of this. We have to see when that happens. We'll get a good understanding, but we won't be surprised if any if we see something crazy because this is a weird thing that's happening. Well, I'm assuming Mephisto presence will be in this series i'm just not as convinced that the character itself will be front and center i'm yeah. i think everything's pointing to Catherine han as the point person kind of the let's call it the you know if, if she's the loki on the ground then mephisto's the thanos of this series right he and i almost am sort of 
my expectations, I will say, for the finale of this show are incredibly high. We know Benedict Cumberbatch is in the finale. We know this has to lead into Doc Strange 2. So I'm kind of half expecting if Mephisto is a tangible character, maybe we get that suggestion or that hint or that cameo in that finale, which then he becomes a part of Doc Strange 2. And now we're now we're kind of off into full <laughs> Scarlet Witch mode yeah. um, after that. So Listen. The buzz is is real for this show, especially because we haven't gotten anything. This is the first thing that we're going to get from the MCU. So people are buzzing. People can't wait. It's going to most likely come out in December uh, when Mandalorian is over. And people, we're we're waiting. We're waiting because, you know, we're trying to... I don't want to compare it to this. It's like, it's a tease. <laughs> After a while, it's like, I've seen this before, you know, and any little thing is just more of a tease, but I, I want to see it already. So I'm, I'm everybody's excited for that moment when it's time. And I want to see, I want to, I want to try it. We got to try that Disney group watch. Hmm. We got to try it out. Uh, I know the time zones, time zones is different, but I, I like to try it out and watch it with, with people to see how this works. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for. I'm also. I would say I'm pretty excited. I feel like because they haven't called her Scarlet Witch, we haven't really seen her cut loose. I guess a little bit in Infinity War. Oh, that's yeah. probably the closest we got. Yeah. She had that With one Thanos. moment. But I'm. I am kind of curious to see how they kind of. You know, will they show us new powers, new abilities, just things that we haven't really seen unleashed? I'm kind of expecting at some point in this series they they take the lid off that. Um, yeah. and that could that could be fun. Elizabeth yeah. Olsen certainly seems to think there's you know she's pretty excited. I mean, you can tell in the interview she's like, you know, these this definitely there are definitely Scarlet Witch storylines that she's been asking for that she's oh, yeah. getting in this show, and so. And then I, and I know which I'm I know which moment she's waiting for, and most people are hoping for it to see. I, I, and I'll talk about it when we do our rankings. All right. Um. So. Tell us what you think about WandaVision and the latest about that. Do you think we're on the right track? Are you guys excited for it? Let us know in the comment section below. DC News. We have some exciting ones. Mostly, well, there's a couple of things happening here with DC. The first thing we want to discuss is Peacemaker, though. James Gunn is running. Like Forrest Gump, he's just oh, running. He's, he's, like speed, he's like Speed Force run. He's like Flash. He's like as slow as the Flash movie is moving. That's yeah. how fast he's moving. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's just going. So the latest we've heard about that is that um, they're quarantining for two weeks. Everybody that's going to be on set and working, right? Yep. And then they're going to get started. Yep. How, let's hopefully we get this in 2021. Uh, I'm excited for this, man. Uh, John Cena, who doesn't like John Cena, man? Who doesn't like John Cena? Who you know, I've seen some of his films, he's good, but this is gonna superstar status right here. Well, we've never status. seen him backed with like a full scale budget, right? His action movies have been sort of, you know, WWE produced or yeah. small scale. And then he's actually been pretty good in some comedies, you know, like Blockers. He's pretty funny in that. But this is the first time we're going to see him with kind of a budget to match his level of stardom from the wrestling world. And we're going to see like what, what he is. But I, I can't get over how fast this project has come together and green light production i mean it is moving faster than almost anything we have on the board right now i'm quite certain man james gunn is sitting down with his peoples and just writing just writing and just doing that and 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 i i, I understand the excitement when you are creating you know and he's certainly in that mode where there's really no other dis distractions but to do this and he's having fun with it and when he's done with that, he's going to go do Guardians of the Galaxy 3. How things have changed. Mm -hmm. There was also some announcements of, of casting, Brian. Could you get into that um, and what you think about each of these casts? Yeah, so some some 
overlaps with Suicide Squad and then some new characters and, and some familiar names. So um, in the overlap category, uh, Jennifer Holland is playing Amelia Harcourt. She's sort of a secret agent who works with Amanda Waller. I believe she is, is, is confirmed to be in Suicide Squad as well. So that's a continuity there. Um, Chris Conrad, actor I'm not as familiar with, but he has an important role. He's being cast as Vigilante. So that's, at least in the comics, was a New York City district attorney whose family is murdered by a crime boss that obviously would seem to fit pretty well with what we know about Peacemaker, right? The, the man after justice, no matter how many lives he has to take to get it. So, mm-hmm. um, so that we've confirmed. Robert Patrick, who I think any sci-fi fan knows and loves uh, as the T-1000, as Agent John Doggett. I mean, he's been around forever. Awesome yeah. actor. He's in a supporting role. Augie Smith. I don't, that seems, that either could be a code name. I think with some of these names where you don't see an established character, you have to be on the lookout for a code name if there's a, if there's a known actor, but that's who he's listed as playing. Robert Patrick was in a movie with John Cena before, right? He did a movie uh, with him. Yes, um, the Marine. Yes, I believe, yes, I believe it was. Yes, 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 yes. So that, that's um, going to be a reunion. And then uh, Steve Agee, who I believe is actually doubling as King Shark in Suicide Squad, but it might be playing a different role in this. But he's in this in some capacity. And then the one I'm most interested in is uh, Danielle Brooks, who's one of the stars of Orange Is the New Black. Now she's been cast as. Leota Adebayo, but I am I am officially suspicious of that. Like her pedigree as an actress and 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 in music, I it just has all the makings of this is an actual canon character that they just don't want to tell you yet. So okay. all of these names. Do you have any speculation today. As, to, as to who that is? No, I have no idea. But I just the, the the profile of the actress is too high to me for it to be a random insert in, in an original story. So I, I think it's going to be somebody. And these are all confirmed today. And, and like you said, I mean, it seems like we're a go for filming in, in a couple of weeks here. So exciting times, man. And we're going to do a nice little segue by talking about this. The pace I feel at which these streaming platforms are creating content they understand what's at stake. So 2021, you thought 2020 was bad. 2021, I think in terms of content for me is going to be ridiculous. They're making it, they're making it now that they're filming like immediately after they're done or after it airs, they they go back and, and, and to get us that next season. And I think in terms of content, we're going to have a lot of competing entities, Netflix, Amazon, Disney Plus. Um, who else? It's just those three. Apple. Yeah. I mean, HBO Max. I HBO think, Max. You know, you know, it's interesting. Like Peacock hasn't really been in this in our genre as much but i mean they're the other viable entity out there i think it's only a matter of time before they try to buy some i mean universal they're gonna try to buy some property or something they can get in the comic book realm they have to yeah yeah (laughs) and um it's funny how quibi just couldn't couldn't launch i and i heard him i I thought the, the idea was interesting but I don't know if I'm. I would be interested in watching a ten-minute show. I, I, I just. I, it just doesn't. You know. I think I like to sit down and watch it. Something. I know it was made for people who are on the on the go. Um. But people, I guess, want to listen to their podcasts and listen to the things that they normally used to listening to. They're not. They're not. I think ready for that quick change. So one thing I'm curious about here is, is are we going to start to see streaming services try to block out release dates the way that studios used to do for movies in the sense of, you know, we're used to now, like in the old days of television, it was like, all right, yeah, the fall season, everything would hit within like a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And now in, in the early stages of streaming, no one really cared when things went out. It was just when it was ready you get your show goes out. Now I'm starting to wonder if like these are big enough events to where certain streaming services are going to try to be like, I got this weekend and other streaming services are going to say, okay, if Peacemaker's on that weekend, 
then I'm going to make sure the Falcon and Winter Soldier comes out three weeks later or three weeks earlier, but doesn't drop the same weekend as... I think so. It makes sense. Because who wants to come out when the Mandalorian is coming out? You yeah, know? I, but the difference there is that if you're going to do it the way they're doing like the Mandalorian, one episode a week, you're going to have some overlap. Versus like if you're going to drop everything at once, you might be able to command an entire weekend. Or I don't know. It's, it's, I'll be very interested to see how this gets sorted out. Because to your but, point, there's so much content. But I'll say this. It allows you to binge episode one of every show you want to see. And yeah, that's no, it. And that's it. But it, it's a lot of content. So the content has to be compelling. It has to be dope. Or else... See, little things like that, I know it's petty. I know it's petty. When in the first uh, episode, and I'm not going to drift too far, but just, just to, things like when man, man, the Mandalorian and uh, the Marshal are riding on their, their vehicles and they're talking to each other and he's talking to him all nonchalant, that stuff bothers me. <laughs> purist I, yeah i know it's like you yo have you seen the mandalorian if you haven't seen the mandalorian i don't know what the hell you're doing here but if you watch the mandalorian you see the money you see the money i see the money floating in the background it's all over the place for me stuff like that bothers because it's like come on you know don't take me out of the experience. <laughs> it was like, I can't believe that, you know, because so far, I, I, yo, so far, I love what I'm seeing, but little stuff like that bothers me. And if I see more of that in other shows, you're going to get turned off, man. You're going to get turned off and you'll probably get back to it. But, you know, things like that can't be overlooked, in my opinion. I think it also leads you to shorter seasons. I think... This idea we see Marvel's featuring six. That seems to be kind of their give or take number. Mandalorian is eight, but it's actually not eight because the episodes tend to be like 35. They're pretty short. They're like yeah. 35, 40 minutes. Yeah. You know, I, we'll talk, I mean, something like the Snyder Cut's unique, but that's four episodes. I think that's where we're headed. I think 10, 12 episode seasons are going to be tough to pull off with this much stuff out there. True, true, true. Because if you remember watching... The same, this was the same thing people were saying over and over when watching Jessica Jones and some of these other. Yes, uh, agreed. It, yep. it, that it went, to, went on for too long. Yes. This is, the, this is possibly the new norm. Let's spend big money. Let's get six dope episodes. Yep. And then a few months, who knows how fast the things are going to turn over? Who knows? Yep. Who knows? Tell us what you guys think about these. Uh, this competition, this healthy competition. Um, are you looking forward to Peacemaker and all these new shows that are going to be coming out in 2021? Let us know which one are you waiting for. All right. So that leads us into Disney Plus. The one that ho holds the keys to our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just dangling it in front of you. Hopefully in the summer yeah yeah <laughs> but it's worth every penny i mean I it's, 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 it'll be worth every penny it's not I worth agree. it right now i just got it because mandalorian is out and i just don't want to cancel it i just don't have time to cancel it take my money right but we're going to talk to you and rank from low expectation to high expectation the confirmed disney plus shows Brian, you have your list. I have mine. I think we'll probably be a little similar. I'll give you the lowest expectation show. Okay. She-Hulk. I don't know what... For me, I just can't picture a lawyer in court that's green and diesel walking around. I don't know how this is going to look. All I know about She-Hulk is she's uh, Jennifer Walters, the cousin of Bruce Banner. Um, she gets injured. He gives her a tr blood transfusion. 
she becomes a She-Hulk, but she doesn't turn back into regular Jennifer Walters. She's she she's a She-Hulk and she has all her wits. She knows what's going on. I don't know how this is going to look. I don't know what the storyline outside of that what is going to be. I don't know. I don't know what to expect. So that's why it's my lowest expectation show. It is number seven on my list uh, out of eight. And I think the biggest struggle I have is the, I mean, I know you have very deep seated issues with Professor Hulk, but the mere fact that they did Professor Hulk doesn't do this series any favors because they've already gone into the territory of the Hulk and Bruce Banner being able to coexist and talk and you know be kind of normal if you will just at great size and so that's kind of what this character is so it feels a little redundant so i'm i'm kind of curious as to how they're going to differentiate it does also sound like it's a mark ruffalo send off a little bit to his hulk since he sounds like he is involved um but i agree with you and i also just think look i mean hulk the hulk world and character has had a tough time uh, I think really finding that sort of widespread audience and, and popularity in the modern age, right? The Bill Bixby sort of old TV series in, in some ways is more, more popular than anything they've been able to produce so far. And so that I think is also working against this show. So I think from an expectation standpoint, I have it seven out of eight. Um, and I think we, so we both agree on that. My eighth is out, it's actually Hawkeye. Um, sorry. I, you know, I love Jeremy Renner. I think he's a fantastic actor. I, I just, never found the character all that interesting or fully realized in the MCU. And this series, which I guess is kind of like a handoff to Kate Bishop, you know, as, as the next Hawkeye, I, I guess, you know, if you just ask me like, am I excited to see it? Do I need to see it? Not really. I guess to me, like six hours of this, I feel like it, it, this could have worked as a side storyline to a movie for you know 20 or 30 minutes and yeah. i think i would have been all right so yeah. uh, for me that's that's number eight but with, with all due respect to renner who i think quite honestly um was overcast in the in like in the sense that i think he's a better actor than what he was given in this role from start to finish yeah and probably deserved a little bit better i hope for his sake the show is better than i expect it to be but that's my number eight my number seven is hawkeye but it would change if the storyline went like this. <laughs> if he's training his daughter to be, to have the skills that he has to be able to defend herself, if he's training her, I would hope it is because of all the things that transpired in Endgame when he was uh, Ronan. Ronan. Even Rhodey said it. I don't think I want to find him because of the things that he was doing. Remember, they snapped everyone back. Those people who were in those organizations, when they get back, they're going to be like, yo, what happened? <laughs> this guy did it. They go after him. That's, that stuff has to come back to him somehow. This would be the only, this story only makes sense if it's that. If it's something else and something I don't care about, then it remains at number, number seven. It's tentatively my number seven because of it. But if it, I would have to revisit if it's something to that effect. You said number, okay, so my, my number six. I would have to say is Miss Marvel. And not because is Miss Marvel. Although the first character I would like to ha see have that ability of stretching around would be Mr. Fantastic. I want to see those effects on him. But I'm sure as Marvel they'll find a way to make it even better. Who knows? And again, Ms. Marvel is not my number six because I think it's whack or it's just. There are other ones that I feel are more worthy. But I'm looking forward to Ms. Marvel because it's going to be new. Because it's, a, it's, it's an actor or actress. 
that I've never seen before. She looks like she's, you know, she can play the part. She looks like she was made to play this. So, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing Ms. Marvel, but it's my number six. What's yours? I am much higher on that show than you are then. Um, my number six is actually, and I'm, I kind of feel like I'm already being- I already know what it is, but go My ahead. number six is Loki. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So for me, and I say that I'm already been proven wrong because there's rumors, or I guess Clark Gregg was quoted, Agent Coulson was quoted as saying there's actually going to be 12 episodes of this, which would imply wow. there's already a second season, uh, which is, I'm a little surprised. I kind of thought Tom Hiddleston's done a lot for this MCU, and I'm a little surprised that there's already thinking potentially of making this more than one season. You know, I could see how this can work. Um, you know, there's shades of quantum leap here, right? You kind of go into different points in history and you've got this, you know, Hiddleston's a charismatic guy. So you have this trickster character that's going to mess with history and mess with timelines. I can see how this could work. I just have a little Loki fatigue. Gotta be honest. Like with, you know, he's been in all the Thor movies. He was the prime villain in the first Avengers movie. I, I, I just, he's had a good run. And like, I kind of feel like he doesn't need a send off. He's already had his, and Quite honestly, he kind of had his send off in, in 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 you know Infinity War in a pretty dramatic way. Yeah. I would have called that like a mic drop and said like that's it. That's I'm it. Out. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I just for me, I think this is going to the well once too often, and I'm a little nervous about it. So I have it at six. I have it as my number five, and I'm looking forward to it, and not necessarily about Loki. Although I I agree with you, Todd Hiddleston. You know he you know the fans like him. We're probably the, in the minority that it's enough is enough is already right. But I'm looking forward to seeing some of the references that will possibly be made because of the TVA time various authority of um, what's this guy's name? Kang the Conqueror. Kang the Conqueror. Fair. That's right. So I'm looking forward to seeing the Easter eggs that will be laid out for that. Um, I understand that we are going to see guess or get to see some flashbacks of Loki when he was younger because they've hired a younger actor to play him or whatever, right? Yeah. I'm curious. I'm curious to see how this is going to work. Um. Yeah, that's my number five. Yeah, that's my number five. So my number five... I feel like I'm going to wind up underselling this. I have Moon Knight at five. Um, wow. And I I dabbled with putting it higher. Um, but I guess in, I kind of mixed where to take the upside swing versus where to take the sure thing. I think with the showrunner being the same guy who did Umbrella Academy, I'm probably going to regret having this number five. That's probably the biggest argument to have this higher, even, even more so than Oscar Isaac. Um, I need a little convincing on, on, on how they're going to make Oscar Isaac work, but the, ca- the premise, you know, again, is, is great. Sort of lots of personalities. It's almost like getting an infinite number of lead characters in one. So uh, I, I could see where I'm going to be probably wrong on this, but I, mm-hmm. I, there's other ones that I felt like I couldn't leave out of the top half. So I kind of almost defaulted into this as number five. My number four is, uh, and listen, well, I'll talk about Moonlight when I get to because I, I agree in some in some things with you, but um, I'm looking forward to Moonlight. Uh, that's let me just say it. it's my number three, but I'll tell you about my number four. My number four is What If. I am looking forward to listening to Jeffrey Wright as the Watcher. That's all right there. I want to see, I want to listen and see. Hopefully, they show him. Hopefully, or they show the watcher. Forget about Jeffrey Wright. Jeffrey Wright, I think, is going to sound amazing. But what the watcher is going to look like and how, you know, we're getting the original actors to do the voice. So I'm looking forward to seeing that and seeing how that sounds. And I'm looking because this is, you know, this is again, this is a, a what those anthology sort of series. Yep. And you can do those forever. <laughs> as long as mo- the MCU is alive and doing content and movies, they can do what ifs forever. So I'm looking, that's my number four. I'm looking forward to what if. 
My number four is Falcon and Winter Soldier. Wow. Uh, yeah, I thought you'd be surprised I put it. So here's here's the argument why why I put it. I, when I put together the list, I was I kind of sat back and I said, this is the surest thing on this list to me. Yeah. This is the the buddy cop. This is whatever genre you want to. This is the safest bet on the list. There's no chance wow. that this is bad. That being said. I did give a little bit of an edge in the end to stuff I had not seen before. That was the one tiebreaker for some of this. And I do feel like these are characters I really like. I'm I'm not, unlike Loki, I'm not done with these guys. I can watch Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan kind of, you know, play, play off each other all day. So I'm ready to see more of that. But I do expect it is going to have, you know, echoes of some of the Cap series that we've seen. Uh, I am excited to see, you know, Sam become sort of kind of earn the stripes literally as, as Captain America. So some things, like I said, this is one of those where I feel like it's the surest thing on this list. Like I'm, I'm definitely excited about it. We're now into the territory of things where it's sort of like splitting hairs to me between like A pluses and A's. But um, I, I did the, the slight edge to the, some of the stuff that's above it was just, I felt like it was venturing into things that I, having I'm, i just haven't seen before i'm having a tougher time conceiving and therefore i'm giving marvel the benefit of the doubt and a little bit of an edge to that so that's why falcon winter soldier is number four okay so my number three is moon knight i'm looking for and, and the reason my <laughs> the way i rank them is 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 weird because i like them for different reasons Moon Knight offers me the ability to see one of my favorite all-time character, if not my favorite, Batman, and how it would look live-action Batman series. I'm looking forward to seeing how they are able to do it. Because I... Listen. The bar for me in terms of how things are... How they look so far has been... The Mandalorian and the money that's being spent into making it look the way it looks. How are these things? How are these things going to look? I think these things are going to look amazing. And Moon Knight and and Egypt and multiple personalities. He's rich. He's you know he's martial artist and Oscar Isaac. I think he's he's fantastic. This could be the role for him that that breaks him out right because he's been all fair hitting that 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 what's it called that. In, in charting, what do they call it? The support and resistance. Resistance. <laughs> he's been hitting that resistance for a minute, you know, and finally he's gonna break out. So that's my number three, Moon Knight. So I put Wandavision at three, um, and I kind of again, I think I, I agonize like, do I put Falcon Winter Soldier three? Can I leave that on my top three? I, I gave one of wow. the edge in the end just because I feel like it seems so different, but it's also because I couldn't I escape the fact that, that Marvel <laughs> has drilled into our head. This is the first experiment where you have to see the series to see the movie. So I, I was like, in the end of the day, I'm just not going to take that show out of the top three on my list because mm -hmm. they're telling me I have to do this. Yes, yes. So yes. for that reason alone, I, I put it number three and... And I do think, look, there's, I think there's real chemistry between Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany. I think they're great on screen mm -hmm. together. It sounds mm -hmm. like, at least in the EW feature, they're great friends off the screen, like yeah. off the screen now. So I can definitely watch more of that. And I think it gives them free reign to, you know, you know, really go in a lot of different directions. But yeah, to me, that it really just comes back to how does this lead into the multiverse of madness? And I can't get away from that. So that had to be in the top three and, and it's number three. I'm surprised. I, I would have thought that would have been number two or number one for you. Mm, okay. So now I'm guessing what your number. I'm, I'm, I, if if that show is number one for you, I don't know. I gotta hear it. I gotta hear what you gotta say. My number two is Falcon and the Winter Soldier because I do want to see the chemistry evolve or see how it move um, continues between um, Sam Wilson and um, Bucky. I'm looking forward to seeing. Um, Sam having that shield taken away from him, right? I want to see how that occurs. Um, I'm interested in seeing the Easter eggs that are going to be laid out for 
the earth based uh i guess content we're gonna get because they're gonna focus a lot on you know outer space and out there and weird stuff and then you're gonna have this world right so i'm looking forward to seeing easter eggs with regards to mute not, not mutants weapon x Weapon X is what I'm looking forward to seeing the Easter eggs for. And Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I think, is going to deliver a lot of that stuff. Uh, yeah, and I'm looking forward to seeing also um, the Captain America that this guy, the general, always crazy dude, bringing, you know, doing things his way. He's bringing in this new Captain America. And, I, you know, and in the comics, he's a jerk. You know, he's not the opposite. He's not the total opposite of... Uh, is he the total opposite of, of Captain America? Not really. He's just a little uh, bit of a jerk. Yeah. So I'm interested in seeing the, the you know the difference in that role in Captain America being this guy. So yeah, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is my number two, and I'm looking. I'm, I've been waiting for this. This is my number two. It could have been my number one because they because they had us waiting so long. I put it down for number two. I'm also looking forward to seeing Baron Zemo and the Thunderbolts. Yeah, yeah, I all agree. that stuff. I I, I, that, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing this and the way Sam, um, what's his guy, Anthony Mackie, has been building this up. He's saying we shoot in um, movies. I, you got you got to see what this is all about. So my number two is actually Miss Marvel. Okay, um, and the reason I have it number two is I just have this feeling this has all the signs of the next great like Marvel. We look back on it and we say they just hit every mark. It's a new actress who looks perfect for the role, complete white space. We have no biases. We have no preconceived notions, but she looks perfect. I like uh, they brought in sort of the, the guys who directed Bad Boys for Life. I think those guys are talented. Um, they're going to be directing some of the episodes on this. So I'm excited mm -hmm. to see them in control of something like this. And I just feel like this is the kind of thing where Marvel has excelled. They take the unknown, you know, they take the unknown actors or actresses, they put them in this role. And it's a role that if you nail it, I think the character has a lot of upside, right? You sort of have this, it's almost like a teen hero, person of color, but then you look at the storylines and the comics she's been in, she has been a linchpin to any number of critical Avengers and Avengers related storylines in the last five or six years. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is a jump jumping off point for something very big if they get it right. So that's kind of my upside. Like if they hit it, this could be amazing. And we're kind of not, we're sleeping on it a little bit because we don't have the big name necessarily leading it, but yeah. that's my, that's, so that's my, that's my number two. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, but I just have that feeling. This is the one that we're going to look back and be like, man, they, they crushed it with this, these choices. All right. All right. Um, my number one is WandaVision, man. Cause <laughs> the Easter eggs that are going to be laid all over the place, the things that it'll be, that'll introduce so many possibilities. And I'm making a prediction. The moment that Wanda says no more mutants out of all, all I don't think it's going to happen in this series, but I think it's going to lead towards that in terms of films and stuff like that, right? It'll be the equivalent of Thanos' snap. No more mutants will be the equivalent of Thanos' snap. It'll be the ending of a film it'll be one of those big moments of despair and all that so i'm looking forward to seeing this is the creation of this possible storyline if they go that route if they go there i think they will and it's in kevin feige's hands man he's this this is his baby so let's see how it turns out, but I'm looking forward to seeing everything that transpires in that show. So, yeah, no, I completely agree. And, and it, there's definitely smoke as far as like the X-Men universe being linked or sort of hinted and teased. And this is an obvious way to do it. And yeah, I mean, you know that I've kind of, my one of my personal hopes is that 
if and when we get an Avengers team up, I actually would like to see team on team. Like I think Avengers versus X-Men or something like that, where we're kind of rooting for both or, or understand both sides of it, almost like a souped up civil war. Exactly. So I, I'm pretty excited that we could see that as a way to intro the X-Men um, versus sort of having a one big bad out there. So this opens the door for that. I completely agree. So my number one is actually what if, and I, you know, I will Wrong. tell you from the second they announced this, it wasn't close. I'm looking forward to listening to this because I did not expect for number for what if to be number one on this guy's list. So this was Talk number one. Me. This has been number one since the second they announced it. And it's not close because for me, because to me, as like a fan of the genre, this is the one thing on the list where there is unlimited potential, right? You could f and then and because we have the confidence that Marvel has really not often led us astray with regard to choices and decisions. This is the greatest sort of, you get to go retcon and change and mess around with any decision you've made to just see where it goes. And you could do that forever. And the fact that you can do it with the actors and the actresses who made these characters so memorable in the first place. Yeah. I'm in for as long as they want to do this. I hope this thing is, you know, multiple seasons and as long as people want to watch. But yeah, I mean, the idea, like you want to make Captain America Soviet. Great, let's go do it. Like, you know, I, I, to me, like if you're, this is one of those, it's a little more geeky, right? I do feel yeah, like if you're a baseline yeah. fan, you may not be as in on this because you're like, wait, I don't even understand. I'm just getting to understand the main <laughs> storyline. Now you're telling, but if you're a big fan of comics, yeah, I think if you read comics, you watch these shows, this is always like one of the things in the back of your mind. You're like, well, what, what if we did do this? What, yeah. what if we did flip the script? Or, you know, we've seen it even the yeah. DC side, like Superman, Red Sun, like there's all sorts of things you can do with these characters that I think are so fun. And so to me, this is almost the ultimate creative. And as you said, Jeffrey Wright is the watcher, like great choice as sort of our storyteller, or our guide. Um, you know, and I don't know, to me, it's just the idea of it just felt very new, original, but also very fun as someone who, who likes the genre. So I'm yeah. front and center for this is what I'm most excited about. Listen, I agree with you on all those points. My reason for it being on number four is because Marvel doesn't have a great track record in their animation department, although it looks good. It, it also it all it almost gives me um, the nostalgic feel of seeing the old 1960 something Superman cartoons, mm -hmm. the classic ones. <laughs> it almost reminds me of that in terms of how it's drawn and animated. It looks really, really well done. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that turns out. And again, it wasn't not my number four just because I think is, you know, is, is lesser than these other ones, but because of that reason is my number four, but now this is number, I can, I can see why, what if could be number one? Cause you can do anything. And, and that's what people want to see. We want to see everything and you can do it here. I think when I did this too, it felt like there were two tiers for me. And I think we're sort of in agreement on that. Cause I think we both had, well, pretty well, we had She-Hulk and Hawkeye kind of at the bottom in some order. Um, and then it felt like for me, the top five, you could kind of flip around. It's like, all right, you, yeah. know, you want to take your Moon Knight, Falcon, Winter Soldier, WandaVision, Miss, I mean, I had, you had Miss Marvel a little bit lower. So you had Loki yeah. in the top five, but like, let's call it, what if Moon Knight, Falcon, Winter Soldier, WandaVision, we each had in the top five, it feels like you could kind of pull those out of a hat and yeah. make a case. Uh, and there's not that much difference. And then there's a couple of these other ones that felt like were a cut below in terms yeah. of expectations. It'll be interesting how these get released. It'll be interesting. I think they're going to, you know, one will play out, then the next one, then one will play out, then the next one. You, do you do you see it playing out where they're, two of these series are both playing at the same time, meaning, on the same on the streaming platform at the same well, time? Well, look, li listen, I think the biggest question is how many of these... I think you can safely say that What If will exist basically on its own timeline and doesn't need to connect. It's animated, yeah, it doesn't need to connect. Okay, so let's take that out of the equation. How many mm -hmm. of these other live action ones will have this element of we need to watch this to then see that? You know, that'll be interesting. The, that, so when you say how many are going to be playing at the same time, I think the real answer to that is how many of these are dependent on films? Like how many of them are connected to other things that we don't know about yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is true. That is true because 
if this all exists in the same world, they, there has to be a timeline where it explains why this character wouldn't be involved, but why it could. Yeah. So, yeah. This was a good conversation. This is what we do. Leave your low expected shows. You leave us your list. I, I would like to see, because some people are crazy. Some, some people are going to put She-Hulk at number one. I know it. I know it. Um, it's funny how they had a rumored a long time ago, uh, Miss America, was it? Oh, that I don't remember. Okay. Yeah, I heard, I heard that a while back, but um, it, it just never kept going. So, because they were announcing mass stuff and then or possible shows and, and, and only these came out. So, we'll see. But, yeah, tell us what you think about our type, our, our top um, shows that we've picked and the and the low expectation ones. Uh, do you agree? Do you disagree? Tell us why you don't agree that for me, WandaVision is number one, and and, and for Brian, what if? Well, I understand what if, because yeah, you they there they can do whatever. They can put out polls and get have people vote. It can go. They can do whatever they want. They. Puppeteers? <laughs> That's what they're gonna do for us, man. They're gonna they're gonna make us choose, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you once again for joining joining us on the Nerd Gen Report. This was a great show. Hope you guys enjoy. Uh, stay safe. Stay safe. Most importantly, stay safe, man, because it's crazy out there. It's like it keeps getting closer. Right. And 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 people just got to, you know, I know I understand the eagerness of people wanting to be with other people because, you know. It's crazy to be in one place with the same people all day, <laughs> you know, you want to get out, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's causing havoc, it's wreaking havoc. Brian, any last words? Well, I'll just say, you know, it, it, to tie the serious note back to the topic of our show, I mean, we got, you know, it's been a been a wild week in a lot of respects, um, but we obviously had a positive headline out of Pfizer about potentially, you know, an effective vaccine, but we also have numbers going up across the board, you know, in the U.S. and Europe. So as we tie it back to our discussions about when can we be safe to go back to the movies and when might we see these things on the on the big screen, it's looking tight to me. I, I think next summer, I mean, just realistically thinking about like, okay, if you have a vaccine that gets approved, how long it's going to take to actually inoculate hundreds of millions of people in different countries to actually feel like you're safe to go into a theater. I would say the idea of, you know, 4,000 screens for Black Widow by May, it's looking like a longer and longer shot to me every day. Yeah. So to your point, I hope everyone stays safe, but as it ties back to our content, I don't know. The 2021 calendar is looking looking tougher and tougher for for feature film, and obviously the the exhibitors have been reporting, the theaters have been reporting, you know, pretty heavy losses. They are they are definitely up against it. You're seeing theaters starting to offer like private rent outs for like a hundred bucks to see you know a, a classic <laughs> film or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. it's it's tough. It's dire times for the industry out there. So yeah. that's you know, hopefully hope everyone stays safe. But it's definitely making things really tight as far as getting this stuff out the way the studios want, I think. It's interesting that those stocks popped today because of that announcement um, from what I heard. And I think the more hope there is, the more delays we'll see. That's what I, it'll be, it's going to be interesting um, six months as we approach some of these uh, new newer release dates, if they hold based on what's going on with the, these vaccines. So we shall see. Anyway, thank you once again. I want to certainly thank those uh, people that have subscribed. Anchor, shout out to you, my friend. Uh, Rick, thank you. I just met him. Um, and I told him, Hey, check this out. And he, he, we started talking for like 30 minutes about superhero stuff and all that. So he's a subscriber. Thank you to his boy, Jesus, not the Lord Jesus, just his boy named Jesus. Um, thank you to, um, 
my boy Ralph, um, designed by Ralph. He does the artwork for the show. And as you can see, Outstanding. you know, we're upgrading and trying to make it look visibly pleasing for you guys every week. Um, I also like to thank uh, for our spotlight show that he's going to be a guy that's going to be drawing some of our artwork for that show. Uh, Romeo, not Romeo Santos. So don't get crazy. Romeo from, from, uh, from Canada. Um, he's, 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 he's very talented. His, his um, IG is in the description down below. If you guys need work from either of those two guys, reach out to them. Uh, thank you once again, and we'll see you next time. Stay safe.